In the beginning, my quest began alone. It was dark and scary. But as I pressed on, my environment around me began to change and things became clearer over time. I became accustomed to my new world. I descended deeper into dungeons. Dungeons filled with peril and death. Traps around every corner. But I persevered. And with persevering came the payoff. The knowledge was the treasure. As I opened up the book and as I read, I'll present it to you. I will give you the secret here of the knowledge of the quest, which is... Artichoke Dip. All right, everybody. When I was explaining about 3D, making your game board 3D to help you a little bit more and to help you RPG and experience, this is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do a basic dungeon crawl for my Lord of the Rings campaign. Here are my three adventurers and they had just entered the underground ruins. And I will be playing that tonight. But I figured I would share this with you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, when you design your game board, how to make things more appealing to make them more fun for you. Alright, moving on. Hey everybody, welcome back to Artichoke Dip. Wow, it's been quite a week. It's been a busy week for me. I checked my YouTube channel and I have picked up a lot more subscribers. I'm very happy. Very happy to have you. Um, if you're new to my channel, uh, you may want to check out the first three videos, the introduction to solo RPG, and I cover a lot of good material in there. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different. Oh, one more thing before I get into that. Thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you very much for your support. And I'm glad to have a community here of solo RPG enthusiast. With that being said, don't forget to subscribe, like, or comment. Any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. You know, if it's something that I can't get back to you right away and answer, possibly in a text, I'll do a video to help you understand if um, you're stuck on something, maybe confused, or maybe you get an idea that will help uh, with everybody else in the solo RPG community. All right, well, moving on with that. Um, all of my other videos, you know, I've done explained a lot about solo RPG, and I, I think you guys got the, you got that now. You understand, and I think probably a lot of you, with the resources and what I've explained to you, will be able to figure that out and develop a system for yourself for your game board. So I was going through my library thinking of a new video to make. And I came across a few books that I bought, and I've had them for quite a few years, and I thought I would, you know, explain them here to you, to help you guys. Maybe you've seen some of these, maybe you haven't. Um, two, I also said in my videos, I do a review of those games that I had, those board games that I said you could play solo, the Dungeons & Dragons series. And once again, I'm going to mention, I don't get paid for anything, I'm not endorsing anybody here whatsoever. These are my own game systems, as you can see behind me. I mean, this is just tip of the iceberg right here compared to, I don't know if you see these bins back behind me, which are also full. So, moving on. The first one I want to talk about, and this one was published by AEG in 3rd edition, and it's quite a unique um, outlook. It's called War. Now, with it, it gives you new character classes, and it gives you ideas, but the whole thing, what it's based around is doing a mass scale babbles war essentially um, it's one of those books I read it read it to cover to cover learned a lot from it um, from a military strategic point of view because it does cover a lot of factual military um, logistics I guess is the word I'm looking for I was never an enlisted man so pardon me if I offend any uh, veterans out there but of medieval tactics. On top of that, it gives you a lot of good ideas how to create and conduct mass battles. 
Besides that, you get new feats. If you're in the third edition, new feats, new spells, siege weapons. I mean, a very large wealth of information. The art, um, the art's not too bad. It looks like they actually hired a, a comic artist to do it. A lot of the art that you see in here is uh, very reminiscent of comic book, which hey, I like comics. I'm a comic fan doesn't bother me much um, but if this sounds like something you know you would be interested in I mean right here I'll read to you the highlights rules for mass combat 15 prestige classes new gods of war rules for siege engines new feats new spells and magic items unit compositions and strategies war campaigns and more and that is called war so if you're looking to do mass combat you want to do large-scale wars I suggest you pick that out so the second one I want to talk about and I picked this up and this is a relatively old book and the nice thing is the way that Palladium did it is it can be used for a wide array of RPGs not just their RPG but a lot of them this book is called Palladium's the Compendium of Weapons, Arms, and Castles. This is a very unique book. This covers literally castles, it's got layouts, armor, weapons, I'm everything you can think of. Now, the unique thing about it is there's actually a lot of real history in here. They actually cover medieval weapons of the time, um, as well as with fantasy weapons. So, if you know any any role playing game book you buy, of course you go to the equipment and you get the list of the equipment. But after a while, you know you kind of desire more. You want more. You want something better for your characters. This right here may be something. You know, if you're in that slump and you're looking and you're going, hey, you know, I would like a better resource, something to get more weapons, maybe. Maybe you want to do a more historical, accurate RPG. I highly suggest you pick this up. Now, this is their catalog number 411. Um, at the time, it retailed for 1995. I'm not going to look for it. It's been a while. It's been out for a while. I'm not going to bore you with the copywriting. I got it off of Amazon, I think, for six bucks. It's in great condition. And it's a large resource, so maybe something if you're looking for more weapons. Maybe you want to build a stronghold. W the book checkout. Another book. This is another third edition book. And I know I, I've talked a lot about, about the basic editions and first editions and all that. Um, back before 08, which 08 was a bad year for everybody, there was a comic book store I used to go to in my neighborhood, and I got to know the owner pretty well, and at the time, 3rd edition was the latest and the greatest. Well, when things were getting bad, and he was getting ready to close his doors, he sold me a lot of stuff, um, below market cost, because he didn't want to, you know, take a complete loss on it. So that's why I got a, a large wealth of 3rd edition stuff. And I thank him very much. Sad to see him go because it was my favorite comic book store of all time. All time. But one of them I picked up out of there. And you may have already seen this. If not, something to check out and think about. It is the third edition Dungeons and Dragons Arm and Equipment Guide. This is a great resource. Once again, just like the Palladium one I showed you, this is actually for, you know, third edition. Everything you can think of, how to better armor, better weapons, siege weapons, transport, you name it, I mean, it's in here. It even gives you hirelings and magical beasts. If you wanted to put those into your campaign, you could do that as well. So, um, once again, like I said, you know, if you're at that point to where all you got is the player's manual, you're just starting out and you want to get some more resources for more weapons, stuff like that, pick this up. Now, this book, I imagine, at the time when this came out, it probably retailed for about 25 bucks. 
Now, you search Amazon and some of the other sites, you can probably get it for about 10, five, 10 bucks, good condition. And if you are interested, if I can find catalog number, ah, here we are, catalog number. I'll hold that up so you can see that right there. Got it. Okay. All right. So I picked up some other books here. Um, one of the publishers that I mentioned was Labyrinth Lord, which was Goblinoid Games. And they put out some pretty cool stuff. It's an independent game publisher. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, you know, I check them, give them a check out. See what you think. Um, all their games are very reasonably priced. Um, and I, I've liked them. I mean, I bought all their Labyrinth Lord series. I have all of those. Uh, and um, I had a lot of fun with those when I got them. I had a lot of fun. I was able to put my older D&D stuff away so I didn't have to worry about wearing it out. I mean, it's already worn, but wearing it anymore. And I used that. And, you know, I had a lot of fun with it. My favorite genre is, you know, high fantasy, medieval. But sometimes we got to change things up. Sometimes you want to do something a little different. And that's what I wanted to talk about. You know, solo RPG, even though I reference a lot to basic D&D, stuff like that, that's because that's what I like. And it's easy for me to explain it to you. But there are other game systems that I do play. One of those that I picked up and I had some fun with, played a few games with it, is called Mutant Future. Now, Mutant Future, this is really cool, is basic D&D meets... Mad Max, basically. It's in a, in a post-apocalyptic world. There's radiation. And because of the radiation, there's mutations that result of that. Now, if you do pick this up and you start making characters, one of the first things you're going to find that I noticed right away is you're going to think when you're making your characters that they're grossly overpowered. Well, not really. And the reason why I say that is when you start looking at some of the encounters in this book and the environmental encounters of this harsh world that you'll play in you'll find out it's pretty well balanced but you looking for something different i suggest this and it's very unique it's a it's really 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 a cool idea had some fun with it um it's not exactly like basic D D. that's why i said basic D D meets mad max basically um it's one of those books you just have to sit down, you would have to read, you get the gist of it. Character creation is just like basic d and it's pretty simple. Um, where you'll really have to pay some closer time, paying closer attention is on some of the mutations because you really got to read them and read the restrictions on gameplay and the benefits and so on and so forth. But other than that, very basic game system. Um, the character sheet, I mean, I'll hold the character sheet up here so you can see the character sheet and how basic that really is. So, oh, a few characters are still in there. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. So, the next one I want to get into and I want to talk about is one that really intrigued my imagination and... Um, played a few games with it. I had fun. Actually, what I did is I melded it with the old miniature game, um, Battletech, and I had a lot of fun with it as an RPG. And, um, you know, because obviously I do have Robotech miniatures and all that. And this one's called D20 Mecha. Now, when this came out, it's a very small book, D20 Mecha, and you look at it, it's a sci-fi fantasy game. D20 Mecha, which if you pick this up, I'm going to show you the compendium, which I highly recommend you get if you do get this. D20 Mecha is an open game, and you can play anything from futuristic high fantasy all the way up to it, like a Gundam or a Robotech where you're, you know, driving around in massive battle mechs fighting one another. Or you could be the captain of the STS-1, where you're out in, out in space, or like a Star Trek high fantasy. Or you can mix the medieval, like D&D genre, meets, we'll say, Battlestar Galactica. 
and come up with that hybrid like that. So as far as detailing a game to exactly your taste and what you want to do, it's very cool, very open, very resourceful. Now, D20 Mecca, this was a hard one to find, and I'm guessing it just, I don't know if it just didn't do well, and not a lot of people are receptive to it. Um, like I told you about that hobby store that I went to, that's how I found this. Um, this one is printed by Guardians of the Order. Boom, right here. I'll hold that up so you can see it. Now, when I bought this, this is 20 bucks at the time. You know, that's pretty much average price for a gaming book. Um, nowadays, to find it, probably Amazon, RPG Now, something like that. And I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Prices, mm, don't know. But, idea. D20 Mecha. With D20 Mecha, what I picked up was called the D20 Mecha Compendium, which is this one. This is cool. It's very, very, very unique. Now, this goes through medieval fantasy. So it would be like um, D and D with Steam technologies. Um, so real crude mechs that operate on Steam, all the way up, just like I said with the original source book D20 Mecha into the high futuristic Gundam. The cool thing about this is it gives you a lot of settings. A lot of settings. One of the things I really enjoyed in this, and not even using the D20, I've used some of the ideas out of the settlements that they give you in here to make RPGs for my game systems. It's a very good wealth of information in here. It's a cool read if you are a battle mech enthusiast and you like futuristic RPGs or perhaps like I said you're looking to mix things up a bit and you want to you know maybe try something different than D&D all the time. Check this out. Now I will tell you this one was made by DreamPod9. Now it took me a little while to find this one. Actually, I had to order this one offline when I got it. This one is a little harder to find. It might not be now, but when when I purchased it, it was. Um, I think it was about 30 bucks at the time when I bought purchased it. But let me tell you what, it's worth every penny. Awesome, awesome. If you want to design your own worlds and you want a unique spin on them, I highly suggest you pick this up. You won't be sorry. It's a cool read. has a lot of cool ideas in there. And it gives you the ability to let your imagination run wild. So, that is D20 Mecha Compendium. Okay. One other thing that I picked up and I thumbed through um, that I found is some of you getting into this are new to miniatures. Maybe you want to get into miniatures. You've never done miniatures before. Uh, or, or perhaps maybe you're having a hard time understanding it because each system is unique unto itself and it has its own spin on rules miniatures is pretty much um, all of them have a how do I put this a standardized system of movement attack movement engage disengage so on and so forth like that but some rules can be very um, rules heavy where others can be more open-ended and more action orientated this one I picked up is called songs of blades and heroes and this is one I recently picked up and I was reading through it um, very 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 basic miniatures and it breaks it down for you very easily so if you're new to miniatures and you're looking to uh, find something that's not so rules heavy that will explain it to you and you can get started fairly quickly and start playing and understanding. Nice thing is, is this is also written so you can play RP, not RPG, but miniatures solo. So it does have a section in there that it will cover and explain to you how to do that. Pretty cool book, picked it up, um, read through it, a lot of it was 
very redundant information for me, stuff I've already known, so there wasn't a whole lot new in there. Um, this is more for the beginner, is what it's really for. If you're new in the miniatures and you are looking to get some information, looking for a great source book at a reasonable price, I highly suggest you pick this one up. This is Anisha Games. Hope I'm pronouncing that correct. If I'm not, uh, hope I don't offend anybody. Looking for a product number for you. Don't see it. I'll hold up that to the camera so you can see it. All right. So, got that out of the way. Showed you guys some of my books out of my library. One thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I brought this up to you before, were the D&D &D sets. And we're going to get into that. Alright. So, moving along. If you remember back when I said in May, I went to Comic-Con, and I found a pretty good deal on the D&D &D board games. I've never really been much of a board game enthusiast. I know you see behind me and you're thinking, what are you talking about? Well, these are actually all game sets. Uh, except for the exception of this one, Hero Quest, which is a board game slash miniature. It's the original... The original, how do I put it? Um, dungeon Crawl board game. There we go. So anyways, moving on, and I... You know, I told you I picked those up, and what a great value they are for what you get for them for your price. And I'm not going to really get into a whole lot of that. I did say I would do a review on it and what I think. And before I start, I'm going to tell you, I don't get paid by anybody for this. This is all me. It's stuff that I picked up. I'm not endorsing anything. I'm just explaining to you what I like and what I found. And, hey, maybe you'll like it. Or maybe not your solo RPG, it's your game table, and you make the decision. So, in May, I went to Comic-Con, and I picked up the Temple of Elemental Evil. This one right here. Okay. Temple of Elemental Evil. In my opinion, it's very well balanced. Uh, very fun. Um... The solo replay value is high. I mean, it, you can sit down and you can play for hours. And um, everything you get with it is wonderful for the price. It's actually a real good bang for your buck. And like I said, very well balanced. If you're looking for a good dungeon crawl, it's very well balanced. I suggest Temple of Elemental Evil. You do, you know, the encounters with the elementals are, they are pretty powerful, but... Hence the name Temple of Elemental Evil. So there you go. Um, with that being said, I picked up the other one called... Haha. Castle Ravenloft. Now when this first came out, and I saw this, you know, I was... At first I was kind of angry because... I loved Ravenloft. I love the Ravenloft campaign setting. Um... One year for Christmas, my wife actually purchased me the original basic D&D Ravenloft campaign setting, which is hard to find, and if you can, it's pretty pricey these days. Love to play it anytime I introduce somebody new to the RPG genre, I should say hobby, not genre. Um, it, that's the campaign setting I will pick to use, and of course I grossly underpower everything, but... It is such a great system in my opinion. I love it. I absolutely love it. And when this first came out, I was kind of offended. And I'm like, well, what are they thinking? You know, they're taking this great genre and they're reducing it to a board game? Really? Let me tell you what. I played this and I've been very pleasantly surprised. And I'm going to explain to you why. So, if you are looking for a solo board game experience to where you want a challenge, you want a real challenge. I highly suggest you pick this one up. The encounters, there's no shortage of encounters. And of course, if you are familiar with the Ravenloft campaign setting, it's a living nightmare. Actually, literally a living nightmare. And the environment is always constantly changing around you because that is the realm of Ravenloft. Now, in the game, 
as you set down a tile if you get a white triangle on that tile you have a sun counter you can only get five you reach five the sun goes down and this guy right here he wakes up and he comes out looking for you and let me explain something to you about that guy one word to sum it up rude he is just absolutely rude I mean rude no way to put it other than that rude so if you are looking for a challenging solo classic dungeon crawl game boarding experience that has a really good challenge to it Castle Ravenloft is for you to be your money well worth spent and like I said before you open them up and I mean you get these great dungeon tiles you get miniatures you get a lot of stuff in there that you can actually use for solo RPG so it's gonna be a double bang for your buck so moving on I have to get my plus one dagger here we just received this today so Wrath of Ashralon. Haven't yet opened it up. As you can see, she's still sealed. I'm going to get into that tonight. Well, let's open her up now. What do you say? All right. Now, as I said before, you get a really good bang for your your buck here. I mean, you cannot go wrong with these. Even if you don't like the game system, you still get a lot. So, man. Oh yeah, by the way, the boxes are like real airtight when you go to open them, just so you know. You wanna make sure you got some nails. So in the course in it, it's real book. Very important. Your adventure book. And what I was explaining to you before, you look at that, those are all dungeon tiles. Your bag of minis. More bag of minis. I actually have the original one of this guy. I would have to dig him out. I don't have him here. When he came out from the original third edition dungeon series where he's painted. So that saved me a lot of time, but now I got doubles. Uh -huh. Your cards. More cards. And those are your treasure, your encounters. You take your nice plastic insert out, and you have even more dungeon tiles so as you can see I gotta punch all this stuff out and I'm not gonna bore you with that because that would be quite boring with that being said as you can see when I open them all up and everything that you get in there this right here and let's open this up so you can see what I'm talking about For your solo RPG, price out a pack of just your basic adventures, then a pack of creatures, another pack of creatures like that, and two more packs like this. Price them out, you're going to come up to around... 40-50 bucks. Easy. Easy. 
you get all of those plus great dungeon tiles to play with. And like the video I showed you in the beginning, as I was explaining to you about the 3D, that's Temple of Elemental Evil Recycle that I'm using. It's my game night, and that's what I'm going to be doing. But I thought I would spend some time with you great folks and show you a few things. Maybe you should go over there. There we go. That'll fit. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Don't mean to be boring. Just trying to pick stuff up here. So. Covered that. I covered the game system. I think I have all of them now. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, I'd have to look. I'm, I'm kind of a gaming hoarder as you can tell um, I hope the video was very resourceful for you I hope maybe uh, you've seen some things you like new things you want to try uh, and as I said you know please don't forget to hit that subscribe button give me a like give me a comment um, let me know let me know uh, you know you got any questions uh, that I can help you answer what have you Hit me up, please let me know, and I think I'm going to start doing my gaming night, so... I'm going to get to that now. Let me see what... I'm gaming now. You can go now. Let me see. Elder Car Storm Reach. Still here? Okay, really? No. It's time for you to go. Bye bye. I'll see you next time. Promise. Next time. Goodbye. Bye. No, you gotta go now. Bye.